This is our world. We have shaped it in our image, made it our own. We are now the only humans in existence, absolute rulers of the Earth. But there was a time when we shared this planet with other very different types of human. By the time our ancestors left Africa around 100,000 years ago, most of these others had gone extinct. But not all. Other species have made the journey out of Africa before us. Smart, strong and well adapted to their environment, they were the dominant species on the planet. So what happened when our worlds collided? Why, despite all their advantages, were those others driven to extinction? Why, against the odds, did we win the battle for planet Earth? thousand years ago, a new species of human arrived in what is now India. The colour of their skin betrayed their African origins. They had language. They lived in small, tightly bonded family groups. These were Homo sapiens, modern people. They were us. Their numbers were few, and from Africa, they had begun to spread slowly across the world. But Asia was already occupied, home to a different human species, Homo erectus. Erectus was a fascinating species. It lasted for a very long time. It's really the longest lived human species we know about. These are people that are being very mobile uh, in open country to get to their food uh, and often to get to their food ahead of the competition. So in that sense, they're very like us in terms of uh, their overall body shape and body build. This is a cast of a thigh bone or femur of Homo erectus from Africa. It tells us Homo erectus was similar to us below the neck. More particularly, this ridge on the back of their thigh bone, this is the cholester, and it grows in response to running. People today who have similar kinds of, of uh, ridges on their, on their fem femurs and have femurs of similar sorts of shape like this tend to be very good runners. I and mean, we're talking about people who are Olympic athletes. If they were around today you know, chasing people around, you'd be in trouble. These guys were like wolves with knives. Recent studies suggest that Erectus were infected by tapeworms, which you get from eating raw meat. It seems that Erectus liked his food red and bloody, even though he could have cooked it. Would Homo erectus have eaten a Homo sapiens given a chance? My guess is, yeah. They probably didn't view each other as members of the same species, and just as humans today will occasionally eat chimpanzees as bushmeat, well, Homo erectus may have felt the same way about Homo sapiens. They may also have been cannibals. Homo erectus bones have been discovered with cut marks, suggesting that the flesh was prized off the skeleton.
Homo sapiens brain is about a third larger than Homo erectus brain. And that, that tells you something. Brains are expensive tissues. They cost a lot of calories to grow up a big brain. So there has to be some payoff for that extra brain. We think the payoff for Homo sapiens is more complex thought, that they're able to plan more complex activities, that they're able to store more information. Homo erectus wasn't stupid, but Homo sapiens may have had some key advantages as, as a consequence of having a larger, more complex brain. Another advantage we had was language. Differences between our and their linguistic abilities can be seen by comparing skulls. The part of the brain that, that, that controls language and speech production is located right around here. And you can see these parts of, of the Homo sapiens brain very much enlarged. That part of the skull bows outward quite a bit. And so there's more brain in that part of the head. On the corresponding part of Homo erectus skull, the brain is relatively small. So the, the Homo erectus brain is not devoting a lot of space to the, the uh, parts of the brain that control language and speech. One of the crucial elements of Homo sapiens adaptations is that it combines complex planning, developed in the front of the brain here, with language, with the ability to spread complex plans from one individual to the other individual to the other individual. 